So this is the final example from section 3.5. So we're looking at example four, which deals with what's called joint variation. And you're probably thinking like, okay, we talked about direct variation. We talked about inverse variation. We really have to have another type of variation. Well, it really isn't a new type as far as I'm concerned. It, it just means, joint means that it has more than one type of direct variation with it. So if you take the y away from here, it would just be z varies directly with x. And if you took the x out of there, z would vary directly with y. But now it's two different things, okay? So, um, and that's because we do have real life formulas that will have more than one thing times your constant. So it can be varying with, directly with more than one thing at a time. So you can have some really strange things happening here. Uh, you can have it, you know, like you double the x's, but you double the, or you cut the y's in half, they could cancel each other out. Or you could have one, as, as one doubles, another one doubles, well then you would end up with it being quadrupled what you're doing. And then when you start getting into these powers, you can really have a big impact on, on what's going on. So um, what I have uh, for an example here is we're gonna be looking at the strength of a rectangular beam. And so when you have a beam that goes like this way, this would be considered the width and going this way would be considered the depth because you've got another dimension. You've got the length of the board as well, right? So that's what you can't see here. You're looking at the like an in view of like a two by four or something like that or a two by 10 or something like that. Um, so if you have the board that way or if you, could, if you have it laying down like this, this would be your W, that'd be your width and this would be your depth. Now, I don't know how much you've dealt with like two by fours or anything like that. But like a couple years ago, I had a deck built on my house and I mean, I already understood how this worked, but, but uh, you know, as you're watching them build that, there's a reason why underneath the part where you walk on, they have it turn like boards turn this way. So if you look at like this, this meter stick, have it up this way, because it is a lot stronger this way. If I turn it flat like this, if you just had the flooring that you walk on with nothing underneath it to support it, this thing is very flexible. You could put some weight in the end and it will bend, okay? And it would be sagging on you. So underneath, you put a bunch of floor, what are called floor joists going the other way. Because this same thing, while very flexible this way, if I turn it this way and try to flex it that way, I can't. And that is because of what we're gonna see in this problem. It talks about, it is the square of its depth, which means that when you take this, which is probably like a half a centimeter, and you have it go to um, this, which was which going this way, the the depth is probably two centimeters at least. So it's going from a half to two. That means it's four times as deep. This go from this to this is four times as deep, but it's four squared, so it's actually sixteen times as strong. So the amount of weight to bend this thing the same way I did right here, the amount of force. I would need it to be 16 times as much force going this way to make it bend that way. And it probably wouldn't bend, it would probably just give before I was able to do that. Because um, the wood no, would not be able to handle it. So, like I did previous problems, the first step is going to be the general equation. All right, so I'm not gonna write out general equation this time, but we're gonna go through the steps. And it says the strength, so I'm gonna use S. I'm hesitant to use S because a lot of times my S's start to look like fives, but I will make sure that if I write an S, I'm gonna make sure it's clearly an S, and if it's a five, it's gonna be clearly a five. So the strength of a rectangular beam, and then it says varies jointly. As soon as I see that, I know that it is K, and then it's gonna be times a couple of things, two or three things after that, all right? So I'm already thinking ahead like, okay, that's direct variation, but more than once. And it says, it's as its width, and the square of its depth. So one of these is going to be W, and the other one is going to be its depth squared. So you can see that the depth of it is much more important than the width. If you've ever been over to the Science Center, and you go from the Science Center over to the planetarium, there's this walkway that, that leads you over whatever that highway that is. Is that highway 40? I don't know, whatever, whatever highway it is, 55, something like that, 70 maybe. Um, as you go across there, they have different exhibits you can look at, like the strength of bridges and stuff like that. They have one that really illustrates this, where they take 
a piece of metal and it's just a flat piece of metal and you walk across it and it's very flimsy, it gives out a lot. But then you take it and what they do is you, you take that and you turn it this way, it's a lot stronger. But the problem is when you're building things, you can't, it's hard to attach to that. So what you do is you take that piece of metal and then on top of it, you, you put a piece of metal here and a piece of metal here. And that's why you get what's called the I-beam. And the I-beam was huge for starting to build skyscrapers because it meant you didn't have to use as much metal. If you tried to do it like a two by four, there'd be a lot of metal to have a two by four in metal. But instead, you can have a thinner piece of metal which gives it its strength because of the depth. And then just put a flat piece on top and a flat piece on bottom for you to connect to. And that saves you on having to have nearly as much metal and does it makes the building framework not as heavy as it would be if you made that one big solid piece, like a, like I said, like a two by four would look. So it gives you strength and you're able to cut down on how much uh, how much you have as far as material. So that's my general equation, but then it says, okay, let's suppose that the strength of a beam that is two inches wide and 10 inches deep gives, can hold 1,000 pounds per square inch. So that means for my second part, I'm putting 1,000 pounds per square inch for the strength. And on this side, I've got K times, and I've got my width is two, so that's gonna go here, and the depth is 10. Okay, so this would be pretty typical. Like I said, the deck on my house, I think has, uh, usually they have to have at least two by tens underneath there. And I think mine actually has like two by twelves or something like that because we wanted to make sure it cost a little bit more. But we wanted to make sure that adding that extra two inches, that's like 20% more, which is going to make it a lot, that much stronger, make it much more stable. So every time you do that, this is something for you guys to think about in the future when you're having stuff like that done. So 1,000 equals, this comes out to be 200 K, so K is equal to five. There's my constant for this particular problem. And again, this would change if, if I if I went from, and the reach you might be like, well, does that work every time? Well, it depends on what type of wood you have. So if you have pine as opposed to cedar, cedar is probably going to be able to hold a lot more. So whenever you do the first calculations to find K, there'd be a different K value for depending on what type of wood that you're dealing with, okay? So in this case, the K value is five. So that means now this equation becomes S equals five. This is what I talk about, making sure my five looks different than my S, hopefully, times W times D squared. So this is, this is step three right here. There's my specific equation. So now, what is it asking me? This is where, this is where the payoff comes in here at the end here. It says, hey, what would happen, basically, if you turned it the other way? Because right now, we had one that was two inches wide. It was like this first one, two inches wide, and it was 10 inches deep. And it was able to hold 1,000 pounds. Well, we already talked about what we expect to happen. You take this board and you do it so that it is 10 inches wide and only two inches deep, it is not going to be able to hold as much. Because now you've cut the depth by made it one fifth of what it was before. And you've only multiplied the width by five, but the width is only to the first power, the depth is the more important part, it is squared. So let's take a look. So we've got the strength equals five times. So I have now my, these have been switched around, so I've got 10 here and two here which comes out to be 200 pounds. It was what, pounds per, I know I added it here somewhere. Per square inch, yes. Pounds per square inch. So definitely made a difference which way we turn the board.